Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Especially when you shouldn't have to. By God, is today's movie bad. It is one of the worst Christmas flicks you could possibly see. It's a wonderful little piece of shit bomb called Christmas with the Cranks. <laughs> based on the John Grisham novel. Yes, that John Grisham. He was so good at making white people afraid of the justice system that I guess he decided to make white people afraid of Christmas, too. He succeeded, but in a way he probably didn't intend. It's mind-blowing how little this movie tries, how tired the writing is, how it doesn't attempt in any way to give us anything new. The jokes are years old, the acting is like something out of the 50s, its message is beyond half-assed and lazy, it's just friggin' horrendous. It's so bad, I wish I could give this review as little effort as possible. Wish? Did somebody say wish? No, 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 I'm not doing that, Santa Christ. No, I am not dignifying this review with any kind of effort whatsoever. Well, we put these costumes on for no reason. Care to get Yuletide hammered? You know. Wait! Decide valves! Get back here, you pointy-eared lushes! Critic, what's going on? This movie tries so little to be anything interesting or good, I want to devote as little effort as possible to it. Like the good old days, you know, before I had a budget or a studio. I just talked in front of a camera, I didn't have to try as hard. Things were easier and better then. Well, the segue you were going to put effort into would have made that happen, but since you're not interested. No, 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 no! I want to give this movie the same shit poor delivery it gave me! Very well then. By the discontinuous powers that somehow killed me in the cinema snob crossover yet brought me back. Yeah, sorry about that, dick. I send you to the past. Oh, this is just my folks' place. Not just your folks' place. Your folks' place in 2007. A.D. You mean I can see? It's young me! Holy shit! What's going on here? Hey, you wanna travel to the future for a day? Really? I get to see all the new ideas Hollywood comes up with? That's right, all three of them. I'm in! Come with me, you slightly overweight scamp. <sighs> Hello, shitty camera. Hello, shitty lights. Hello, shitty movie. This is the cheapest possible review I can give to you. No budget, no cutaways, just one asshole piece of shit talking to another asshole piece of shit. This is Christmas with the Cranks. The movie opens with a convention center doubling as an airport where two parents, played by Jamie Lee Curtis and Tim Allen, are saying goodbye to their daughter who's just off to join the Peace Corps. As we also say goodbye to the only bit of human decency this film will offer us. I just need a couple things from Chips. They stop by the store to pick up some items. Or rather, Curtis has her husband go in to pick up some items. I didn't bring the umbrella. Oh, I need that stuff from Chips. I didn't bring the umbrella. Well, I still need it. Eh, should have done Santa Claus 4. But he doesn't get the right stuff, so she sends him in AGAIN until he gets it right. Did you talk to Rex? The butcher. I didn't think of asking the butcher where the chocolate was. But I will. Thank you. Our main characters, everybody! The Kardashians too down to earth for you. We'll sit back and enjoy these charming a-holes. I really think you need an umbrella! You know why I don't want one of you stupid umbrellas? Because I can't wait! I just... You know there's slapstick and then there's crapstick. I'd much rather eat crapstick rather than watch any of this! All oh, right, I don't have any visuals. Um, hum, rum, rum, crap, Fed up, he goes to the office to figure out how much they spend on Christmas each year. And just to give you an idea of what kind of movie we're in for, this is the kind of music they play throughout the entire thing. Yep, that Einstein for Baby score accompanies the whole film. It's like having this music throughout the entire review. I'm reviewing, viewing, 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 viewing. Seeing how much money they spend every year, Alan has an idea. Be right back. Make sure you shut the curtains. So she mistakes I'll be right back for I want sex on the table. A common error. As he explains that they should cancel their Christmas party and go on a cruise instead. The most luxurious ship in their fleet. Cayman Islands. 
Snorkeling! Uh, was that snorkeling or chloroforming? Grant that heavy dose of that would be welcome at any time. Well, we can still give our charitable donations to Children's Hospital and, and of course, the church. No, this is a total boycott, honey. It's $600. It's a total boycott. Yes, it's part of a complete asshole package. Look, there's even a part where you can sign up for ISIS. Don't you just sympathize with these people? She horribly agrees, as she forgot we have to put up with them throughout the entire picture, as Alan writes a pointless letter saying he's not participating in Christmas to his co-workers. He says he's not angry or bitter, yet he so angrily and bitterly hands the letters out. I am not angry, and I will not yell humbug. No, really, I'm not angry. Not even the slightest. Say, what's that? Curtis also lets the aunt from Sabrina the Teenage Witch know, and immediately anger starts to spread. We're not going to do Christmas this year. How do you simply not do Christmas? She's not ordering Christmas cards either. Don't you know? Christmas is about not embracing variety and shaming those who do. We're taking a break. One year off, no Christmas whatsoever. I told you this would happen if we let refugees in. Their block is not especially happy either. We're not buying a Christmas tree this year. Sorry we had to go up on the price. We're making less per tree than last year. It's not about the money. Even though you clearly said that it is about the money. Hello? What the hell? Hello? Anybody home? Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. I cut to random film clips a lot more in the past. <laughs> yeah, got it. Groovy. I'm good. He slimed me. Knock it off! Ah! Okay, maybe some of the traditions of the past are a little much, but you know what? It's still great to be back in the good old days. Son, when are you gonna stop swearing? Shut up, Mom! People are gonna find this charming! The Boy Scouts go and tell the head of the block, played by Dan Aykroyd, about the cranks abandoning Christmas. Becker's at it again. Even Vic. Enjoying the randomly placed snow puddles the sun didn't melt for some reason? But I gotta tell you, a lot of the neighbors are pretty upset. If you're trying to make me feel guilty, get off of it. You're just upset because my home improvement bumped in safe soul now. Perfect time to put up frosting. But of course it doesn't stop there, as every house on the block apparently hangs up some giant frosty decoration. Oh come on, you know what never has and never will be a thing. And the cranks refuse to hang theirs, spreading more misery to the easily offendable. Still working for the man, huh? Thought they would have made you a partner by now. I gotta get to work. Well, have a good one, old man. Wow. That's some prime meat asshole right there. Can I have yesterday's asshole? No, no, you deserved a creme de la creme asshole. Straight from the witch's vagina. Bah, humbug. Good morning, Mr. Scrooge. Walmart call. Said I had to buy my own cheap perfume. Since Santa Claus isn't coming this year. Well, at least our Starbucks cups are still celebrating Christmas. Oh my God, you will face the wrath of my first world problem! Get a load of this. The neighbors actually line up outside their house demanding Frosty. Do any of these people work? We're here for Frosty. Oh, they're gonna come back. Oh, come on, lady. Olive oil wouldn't overreact this much. They want Frosty. Well, they can't have him. They won't go away. Well, don't give them Frosty. Not giving into a demand that would take seconds of no effort is working out great in this stress-free Christmas that we apparently wanted. I am one trapped here. I am the one dealing with this. Christ, she react less to Mike Myers approaching the house. I said she react less to. Oh, that's right. I don't have any actors. Um, let me move the camera. Nope, nope. I'm keeping it still. Simple old days. Um, Mike Myers, you may be a serial killer, but these people want me to hang a snowman. They're much more dangerous. If only I could get you this afraid of me. Sorry, Mike Myers. It's Christmas Town. You know, the past is a lot more awkward than I remember it. She tries driving away, but the neighbors who have clearly sacrificed the art of having a social life chase her down. Give us Frosty! Please! <gasps> don't be forced! <gasps> you know, crapstick is too good a word for this. How about something more fitting like, um, slap shit? Enjoy your slap shit, everybody, which is, again, something I'd much rather do than watch any of this! So to feel better, they go to get a tan from this sexy Oompa Loompa, which, of course, leads to even more confusing comedy. Whoa! Ah! Wow! Excuse me. Oh. oh, sorry. I'm an unexplained weird voice pervert you'll never see again. 
atomic gold? Apparently they thought that joke would work so well that they actually do it again. Only this time with a perverted priest. That's a mall, Nora. I'm Christmas shopping. Of course you are. Jeez, lady, make up your mind. Notice that awkward silence that's accompanying this entire scene? That's because you're laughing so hard at this ingenious setup that they're actually allowing you to laugh at it! They're so considerate that way! Hello, sir? Oh, there's a risky. Um... <laughs> hey! Yes, because tanning is not God's way. Or the way of all these onlookers who clearly have never left their homes and have no idea what's supposed to be inappropriate in the real world. Hell, it even makes the front page of the news! I am not shitting you! The front page news! What the hell is going on here? They're preparing for a cruise according to unnamed sources. Okay, I haven't been to Oak Park or Riverside recently as they're not that far away from me, but this counts as front page news to them? Seriously? Stop the presses, everybody, a rock! Oh my god, this is the biggest story ever since Squirrel! We're on bigger than Squirrel lockdown, everybody! We have to address the elephant in the room! No. Ah! Oh, that's right, I forgot about those memes I always tried to force. Of course! Okay, that didn't connect to anything. <laughs> yes, it is, but... <laughs> just like that, but... I was frozen today! None of this has to do with what I'm reviewing! Stop it! Stop it! Spiders! Christ! I thought all these repetitive traditions would be great, but I'm sorry, I gotta return to effort! What? You can't go back yet! Why not? Because you're supposed to learn your lesson by the end of the video! We're not even halfway through! Look at the little red bar there. I don't care! I need to go back right now! Fine, but we're violating the screenwriting lessons of Chris Columbus. Let's never have him in the house again. Agreed. You out! What have you done? What? Your reviews, they have more variety, actors, and visuals! Well, yeah, you gotta evolve in order to stay relevant. I've seen reviews where there wasn't even one white wall. That's your identity! And some of these don't even have clips from the movie. Yeah, it's a different kind of reviewing to get a lot of hits. But that's not traditional. How the hell can you do a review with no clips? It's similar to how other critics did it for hundreds of years. No, it's not a review. It's just sketches. You're not saying anything about the movie at all. Oh, my genius atrocious and makes no goddamn sense! Because we always use synchronized movement. Yeah, no commentary in the slightest. Who knows what this might lead to? Crossovers, anniversary specials, a pointless feud with an angry gamer. And all of them will bomb! Okay, I don't have time for this. Go back to same back credit card 20 times! No, I am not done here yet! Well, I tried. <sighs> so, in an effort to make you as uncomfortable as possible, this scene happens. F shield. You went for a checkup yesterday. The cancer's back for the third time. Whoa! This could be her last Christmas. Sweet. Yikes! Uh, well, okay, I guess we have to find the time to show how this is affecting everybody. <laughs> or we can just return to the goofy music and silly shenanigans. It is an old Scrooge himself. I'm not even kidding. It cuts directly to that after literally 20 seconds. 20 seconds of suddenly talking about cancer. Jesus Christ, the bedside manner of this movie is on par with a Canadian PSA. It's a rape whistle. Merry Christmas! They even have the balls to cut to the husband of the cancer patient being an asshole again. What is this movie trying to do? I try to be old man. Stop that. Stop what? Stop calling me old man. You're like 10 years older than me. Am I? Yeah. Well, prove it. Walt? I just heard about Bev. I'm so sorry. You know, if we could bottle this movie and drop it on our enemies, nobody would ever touch us. So later on, on the most evenly lit block in town, a bunch of carolers come to sing for the holidays. This causes the cranks to duck and cover for some reason. Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. 
Who the hell does this? I mean, I'm not a fan of something like country music, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna act anything like this if somebody played it. Tamara, stop playing that music! Why? Just do it! Oh, don't ever force me to have those incredibly normal spasms again! Freak. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride. Okay, can we never cut back to Ackroyd singing again? I thought there was a legal agreement. He would never do that again after Blues Brothers 2000. Apparently their Christmas spirit is so down that even their statue of Frosty turns evil. I can't make that shit up. And that's not just the lighting, they had to literally sculpt that to give it an evil brow. Your symbolism's amazing. Why don't you just have an alien pop up in gravity and say, She's a fetus! It's a metaphor for rebirth! This leads to the movie turning into Home Alone for absolutely no reason. Yeah, take that, mailman who has no interest in my actions. Look out, it's clearly not cold enough outside for that water to freeze. I'm just gonna assume that was thrown in there for the poster. Is it on there? Yeah. Animal cruelty is fine as long as it's used for promotional purposes. And hey, since it's the early 2000s, why not a needless Botox joke? I got a Botox injection today. Because Lord knows, this won't be everywhere. I got a Botox. It's the Botox. I just swung by a little Botox party. Did you bring any Botox? I didn't bring a Botox. Did you Botox your face into an expressionless mask? Uh, Malcolm! Damn it, Jordan, come on. <laughs> And we lay that joke to rest. No, don't do that. After his face heals literally the next day, hey, he heals faster than the air scars this movie leaves, people call their house demanding that they free Frosty. They even start standing outside all day. Free Frosty, free Frosty, free Frosty. Hey, Bobby, you want to waste hours of our childhood chanting outside a house about how someone should hang up a piece of plastic? What growing boy hasn't? But suddenly they get news that not only is their daughter coming home for Christmas that night, but she just met someone and is getting married. Oh, that seems really fast and out of nowhere. We should obviously sit her down and talk about her future. We're having a party. Or throw a Christmas party, that's obviously much more important here. What about our trip? This was all your stupid idea. Five minutes ago I was a genius. Yeah, well, now you're an idiot. Hey! Hey, that's what every fan said about John Grisham after watching this movie. Five minutes ago, I was a genius. Yeah, well, now you're an idiot. This moment is apparently so wonderful that Frosty goes back to smiling again. It... Is that snowman possessed? Should we make the next one out of holy water? So, the always loving Boy Scouts rake up the price for their shittiest tree. Kinda surprised they allow their name to be attached to this, actually. So Alan asks his neighbor if he can borrow his. Christ, that's not a tree, that's a stoner's breakfast. But it's okay, he uses one of the kids still chanting outside his house to help him out. Free Frosty, free Frosty. Okay, seriously, who would waste so much time on something so pathetic? Uh, critic? Free, 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 critic, I never thought I'd say this, but you have my permission to beat the shit out of me. Free Critic. Free critic! Wait, 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 wait! He barely had you in this episode, didn't he? That's true. What if I told you I could get you an even more important role? So Curtis goes to pick up the last hickory honey ham in the store. But another woman has her sights on it. Okay, can we agree that any movie with comedic nutcracker music should be dead to the world? Happy holidays. You know I feel like slap shit is too good a word for this now. How about shit shit? That's, you just watch this movie, you say shit shit. Can you think of any other perfect word for this? Hell, a little kid can look at this and be like, shit shit. Yes, yes, very good, Billy. Shit shit indeed. Its comedic foundation is seriously yeah, lacking. Okay, don't oversell it. But she comes across what Martin Short will look like two years from now, who somehow gets invited to the party. Thank you. <laughs> who are you? Meanwhile, Alan tries to put Frosty up on the roof. Hey, kids. Guys. 
Mr. Crank is putting up his frosty. To hell with these boring video games. We can watch the wonder of a man slowly plugging in a light. Easy, easy, careful. We gotta go back that way. Okay, is that thing made out of Satan's saliva? Do you want to kill Tim Allen? Emergency vehicles come, pointlessly parking on the lawn and cutting him down in a way that injures him even more. Huh? Uh, oh! <laughs> Firefighters, bunch of hacks, right? So they finally let everybody know that they're celebrating Christmas again and they need their help to get ready. Drop what you're doing and pitch in. Why should we do this for him? Yeah. 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 He's a jerk. Regardless of how you feel about Luther, I know a lot of you have mixed feelings about him now, but we're a community. A dangerously OCD community with issues we'll address another time. And the people in a community stick together, even if one of them has been behaving for most of the holiday season like a spoiled, selfish little yeah. baby. Unlike us, bottom line, peer pressure always works. If someone doesn't do what you want, harass them until they do it. Christmas! So as everyone tries to prepare for the party, a couple of cops who should be on duty pick their daughter up. All while partaking in what I can only call seizure-inducing editing. Oh, Officer Fromine here. Do you read me? Wow, if that doesn't give you a medical condition, I don't know what will. Officer Fromine here. In fact, is it me or is it repeating? Boy, if that really was repeating, that could really mess up your mind a little bit. Maybe even causing you to pass, uh... Excellent! Now the nostalgia crack will be like the old days! Nothing but clips, memes, and if there's time and actual analysis of the movie! <laughs> You'll give us a more important role, right? Of course. Why is it whenever I wake up, I always have a 50-50 chance I'll be held against my will? Okay, well, special storage closet edition. We see one plug somehow takes out an entire block, but has turned right back on again. I'll alert you if this ever becomes relevant. As the cops are told to stall dropping off Blair because they're not ready for the party, so they fake a breaking going on. Only to discover, there really is a breaking going on! What are the goddamn chances? There is. Police! Eat this! I was talking to that ladybug on the ground as I clearly didn't throw that anywhere near you! They eventually catch and arrest him. Yeah, I'm guessing that was a fun ride home. As per obvious police protocol, they don't take him to the police station, drive him instead to a suburban home, abandon him and go inside to enjoy the party, leaving him all alone in the car with the window open. Christ, is there a speed limit for how much stupid this movie is doing? And get this, purposefully overlooked Malcolm in the Middle Joe comes up to the criminal and actually falls for the lie he's telling him. I'm starving out here. I haven't eaten in seven days. Seven days? Yeah. Any scraps I get, I give to the kids. You look about the age of... idiot. You believe anything I say, right? No funny business, right? Yeah. Swear? How my kids' lives. I mean, come on, if you can't trust a guy in the back of a police car, who can you trust? Thankfully, this doesn't interrupt the toast that our family is making. I, I, I just wanted to say thank you. Aww. You really have shown us the true meaning of community. Through your constant harassment, you came through after we gave you exactly what you wanted. Cheers, assholes! But Alan is mad because he didn't get to go on his trip. And also because this movie clearly doesn't know how to stop. WHY IS THIS STILL GOING?! Everyone out there sacrificed their Christmas Eve to help us. I thought maybe that might affect you. Maybe have you start thinking about putting others first instead of yourself. Why can't you join the rest of the neighborhood in their one selfish need? But Alan gets the idea to go to the neighbor whose wife has cancer. How's Bev? Oh, oh she's having a good day. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh... Uh, we, we started over to see Blair, but, you know, snow started. Yes, and it was a whole two more feeds, so... 
Seeing how Alan and Curtis aren't going to use their tickets anymore, they decide to give it to the couple, allowing them to go on the trip instead of them. This is a sincere, heartfelt Christmas offering to two very selfless people. Hmm, yeah. Should we look at those selfless moments again? Think you can run away from Christmas, huh? He's kind of weird. But is an old Scrooge himself. Thought they would have made your partner by now. What a jerk. Real saint. I've got airline tickets, I've got cruise passes, I've got a brochure. Half of those you can't transfer over, as everybody knows, but hey, it's the last minute thought that counts. What about the cat? I'll take the cat. Are you sure? Yes, because after stepping on it, hissing at it, and freezing it nearly to death, I totally trust you to look after his well-being. By God, remember the days when scenes had one or two dumb moments in it? This has got to be a Guinness record. But even still, it's not over. As the burglar decides to rob the Cranks house, as opposed to literally every other empty house on the block. No wonder you frigging got caught. And we finally find out who that guy was who Curtis invited to the party. I told you you could use an umbrella. Wait a minute. You're the guy that was selling umbrellas in the rain, aren't you? It's a living. Merry Christmas! What a twist! An incredibly weak, tying into absolutely nothing important twist! And here it finally ends. Thank God. I can't imagine in the last few seconds they possibly make this any dumber. Okay, I can't imagine it possibly getting dumber than that in the last pop. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas to all, and I spiked all your eggnog. What the hell was that? He was Santa. Who dresses as Santa? Because he doesn't look like Santa. And flies a Volkswagen. After selling umbrellas. For money. Santa sells umbrellas for money. But he has reindeer. We at least got that part right about him. You know, seeing how we pretty much got every other conceivable thing about him wrong. But hey, at least Christmas with the Cranks set us straight. Proving once again that they have an unbelievable understanding of everything Christmas. It's so stupid, it's so stupid, it's so stupid, it's so stupid! Huh, I kinda have this exploding problem looked at. And that was my 8 minute review of The Last Airbender. I'm sorry the wall was the wrong color, but hey, at least it's not as bad as A BAD CREDIT CARD! I'LL KILL YOU! I'LL KILL YOU! I'LL KILL YOU! What the hell are you doing? I did it. I did a traditional Nostalgia Craig review with no visuals, no cutaways, just me in front of a white wall! Well, what'd you do with Malcolm and Tim? Oh, I put them to good use. Here, you're exactly like this movie. You think that never changing and just repeating the same traditions over and over is somehow what's most important. Well, I'm about to show you. I just posted this on the internet, and I'm gonna prove that people like to see the exact same formula over and over. And soon you're gonna have to change that wall to an off-white. Off-white! Yeah, well, I'm embarrassed you were ever a part of me. I'm gonna wrap up this review telling the world that. Haha, -ha, here we go! But barely anybody's watching it. Nobody cares that this is like one of the old reviews. Yeah, well, there you go, idiot. And the comments, they're not positive at all. Gosh, it's almost like the majority of online comments are usually... negative. Look, you're still pretty new to this, but there's a saying that most of us know. Yeah, you never read the comments. But that's why I did it. To make them laugh. I figure... Maybe if I can make them laugh, I could finally get them to like me. That's the whole reason I started doing this. <laughs> hey, loser, where's Patty Mayonnaise? <laughs> hey, Spielberg, what's the name of your next movie? Attack of the 50-foot forehead? <laughs> I was thinking maybe if you weren't uh, doing anything this Friday night, maybe we could hang out. Ew, <laughs> gross. I just thought this would change everything, you know? We're not who we were. We change. 
sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, but we all change. Movies like this don't want us to change. They try to shame those who do things their own way. They act like the importance is in the details and not in the overall message. This is a horrible thing to teach, especially when talking about Christmas. But we shouldn't be ashamed of our past, nor should we glorify it. It's like anything, there's positives and negatives. There's good moments and bad times, and there's bad moments and good times. Because of this, traditions can be hard to figure out too. Sometimes we obsess over things when we don't need to. Other times we try something new when we probably should have left good enough alone. But in between one foot in the past and one in the future lies what matters most. The choices we make now are what always has and always will define who we are. So this Christmas, when you're remembering to be kind and understanding of others, remember to be kind and understanding of yourself. And those moments you remember as being embarrassing you may find are not only the most precious moments but often the most important and sometimes should be looked at with more appreciation than you think. We're always going to get angry at ourselves, but as long as you always try to learn and get better, you'll find it doesn't last that long. And trust me when I say, you're definitely worth the time. I'm the Nostalgia Critic. This movie can suck it. me you gave me a seizure hey you barely put us in the review oh yeah he made that a lot better hey it's not easy being a table it's not easy being unconscious you know how hard it is to balance a camera on top of your head oh god for you Tamara, pan left. Pan right. Dutch angle. White balance. Okay, this is as white and as balanced as it gets. You're fired. Fine. I'm not even mad. <laughs> <laughs> what a jerk. Hey everybody, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and I have a funny story for you. Uh, when we were shooting this review, we were outside about to shoot a scene with uh, Nostalgia Critic and Santa Christ and this car pulls up and they pull right into our parking spot and we don't recognize the people and they get out and we say, can we help you? And they say, uh, Toys for Tots. I drop it off Toys for Tots. No, 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 we're not Toys for Tots. And they're looking at us like, are you sure? And we said, yeah, we're sure. Why would we know where Toys for Tots are? And they said, well, cuz you got a guy dressed like Santa Claus there. Oh, no. <laughs> Un unrelated. Amazing. Totally unrelated. So, bizarrely enough, they were driving around looking for Toys for Tots, and we happened to come outside with a guy dressed as Santa Claus. What are the chances? <laughs> And I took it as a sign. So the charity we are doing this week is Toys for Tots. Uh, a lot of you have heard this charity before. This is a charity that gets toys to kids who are not able to have toys this Christmas. A lot of people donate in December, but for next year, it's good to know that they actually start in October and November as well. Uh, the more toys they can get, the more kids can have these toys. And these are children that either come across hard times or the parents come across hard times and are unable to get gifts. I mean, there are so many people out there that are just going through such rough patches right now and just are not able to do something that every kid deserves. Every kid deserves to have presents around Christmas time. And these are people that make it happen. 
It's of course done by the Marine Corps, but they also have so many good sponsors behind it. They have Disney, they have Macy's, they have Toys R Us. All these people try so hard to raise awareness, and you see that poster everywhere of Santa with the Marine uniform in the closet. And if you even go to their YouTube channel, Marine Toys for Tots, you'll see that so many kids benefit from this, and so many celebrities get behind this as well. And it's just a good cause because every little kid deserves presents on Christmas. And by donating toys or money to this wonderful charity, you can help make that happen. So whether it's donating online or just driving around until you see a guy dressed like Santa, please definitely take the time to look into it, buy a gift for a child less fortunate, and help them have a wonderful holiday. Donate to Toys for Tots. Yes! It's a good organization. Santa Christ approves. <laughs> <laughs>